right. levels as all senators of the Republic of Kenya. All right, let's wind up on this conversation now and talk about the judiciary versus the executive. And Willis, you'll start us off on this one now. Has the judiciary unfairly targeted the executive? Is there a need for dialogue? Those are two separate questions. The first thing is that the judiciary has not unfairly targeted the executive. If anything, this executive in particular has been treated with kid's gloves by the judiciary. Even their coming into office was a result of a court order. So you cannot say that the judiciary has unfairly targeted them. Number two, we must understand where their frustration is coming from. And that frustration is coming from the housing levy. That's all. It's pure and simple. They've never complained about anything else. It's just because the judiciary found that this housing fund and housing levy, as they have proposed it in the Finance Act 2023-2024, is unconstitutional. And in trying to even address it, they came up with their own uh, affordable housing bill that the court said, the man in which you're trying to do your public participation, you please wait a minute, let's follow the constitution before we even go further. And why this is a big thing to Kenya Kwanzaa is very simple. Moi had Maziwa Enyayo. Kibaki had free primary education. Uru had his chuchu train, the SGR, as the poster, his poster campaign. Kenya Kwanza has anchored theirs on the so-called housing, developing 200,000 housing units per year for five years. So, and they hope that the people of Kenya will fund that, their Mirage project for them. And when the judiciary is scrutinizing how they are proposing to do it, they are having a problem with it. And I say that because of this. When the judiciary found this, this issue to be a problem, number one, if you look at the appropriation bill, there was no voted on housing. We meet what is called housing for the first time in the Finance Act. But in the order of things, appropriations are first made. That's why you set up your revenue estimates and you put voteds. So it will have been a voted in the Ministry of Housing. Then you go to the Finance Act as a revenue raising measure to fund your revenue estimates. That's why if you ask any of these two gentlemen, I mean two gentlemen and a lady, what will be the is revenue estimates from the housing levy, none of them can tell you because it doesn't appear in the appropriation bill. It only appears for the first time in the Finance Act. So what revenue measure is it going to fund? That is where their problem is. And the courts, if you look at the decision of the court from paragraph 132 to 136, they try to bring that out, that all this thing was illegal from the beginning. So where is even this fund being paid into? Because it can't be paid to the consolidated fund <coughs> without a voted. And if you pay the consolidated fund, the control of budget will never prove of it to go out because there's no voted in it. There was no appropriation made at the beginning of the financial year for it. Hence, you see the fight was started with the control of budget. Now it is the judiciary because progressively we're exposing what is going on here. This housing thing is an entire scandal. Mm -hmm. And anybody who will try to come in between is going to be maligned as an enemy of the people of Kenya. But we're used to Kenya Kwanzaa and what they do. So the second point is this. We don't need any dialogue between the judiciary and the executive. The constitution has already defined the dialogue between all institutional organs of government and the people of Kenya. If President Ruto wants to meet with the judiciary with Martha Komi, then that meeting should have within it law society of Kenya, as ourselves, which will be there. We want religious leaders to be there. We want political parties to be there. And we want it to be live streamed. And let Kenyans now start going back in the day. Yeah. From the time when hot air was said on TV by the same Martha Kome. We want to go back into time to determine when cases were being dropped in those courts when Kenya Kwanza came into power. So we must look at the totality of everything. Okay. And if they are saying that judiciary is corrupt as an institution, not individuals, then we want to know that those orders which have ever been issued in favor of the executive, they need to tell us how much money they paid to procure those orders, who they bribed, and which cases were those. Because the president even equally said that Uhuru previously had a, a fund to bribe judges. He needs to go further and tell us how much was allocated to that fund, <coughs> who were the signatories to that fund, which judge was paid, who was the conveyor, which cases were being handled. Don't just make blanket statements mm -hmm. without substantiating. This is the time ya watu kuambiana ukweli. So let him start by telling us the whole truth about that judiciary bribery fund and how it was administered. Then we go to the next level. So even the cases which have been decided in your favor. I have court orders against state officers, myself as an advocate. I'm struggling to execute them. They don't even want to honor the, obey the court orders. So they should tell us, and even some of them have court orders against my clients. Yeah. I want to know how much they bribed the judges 
to procure those orders that now they are saying are illegal? Okay. Or is it only legal because it is now exposing yeah. what is going to be the largest scandal in the history of mankind? The housing scandal is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of this country okay. when its totality is looked into. Manzo, is the judiciary beyond reproach and is there a need for dialogue? Well, the, the judiciary is not beyond reproach. Uh, and first of all, the independence of an individual judge cannot be taken away by anyone. Um, there's no need for dialogue at all. Dialogue for what? <coughs> you know, the judiciary has its mandate in the Constitution. And that's what it does. And uh, it is true it can be intimidated. And uh, again, also, this um, housey levy is a big problem. Uh, as you have heard, you, you don't know where to place the money, and you don't know who has collected the money, and it has been channeled to where. The, the Minister for Finance is, is not sure whether it is a tax or a levy and what to do with it and to what account it is going to and parliament has not budgeted for it but yet it's supposed to be working and again if you follow it up and they need to pick a good example of rwanda there is a um, housing projects going on in rwanda and where they build these houses the people who have just been removed from the shanties are exactly the people who are brought back to the good houses without pay but in kenya you it's, it's broadcasted as a poor people <coughs> Hustlers project, but when it comes to the amount of money needed to buy this house, there's no way a poor person would ever afford this house. So they are for a certain class, and it is a, it's a way of ending up uh, discriminating the country. And when you look at the example today, the deputy president, uh, and that's why uh, John Yoto is right, he is purporting to go to to, 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 to to you know to do a demonstration to the chief justice, uh, and go there to uh, uh, allegedly lay an appeal, uh, pretending that it is a JSC compl uh, complaint. You see, when you lose a court case. Justice Esther Maina. Yes, and, uh, and, uh, and it's targeting one, Esther Maina, who is from the mountain. <coughs> this is a problem, the people of the mountain have a, have a problem with the Rigathi. Why are you destroying your own people, yet you had an opportunity to appeal against her judgment? If she makes a judgment against you, you quickly go to the Court of Appeal, stay that order, uh, if you are not happy with the Court of Appeal, you go to the Supreme Court. If you have uh, tribal issues uh, or, uh, at the Supreme Court, uh, and especially if it's a public petition or a public interest thing. So I think uh, there is a very big problem. If uh, the Deputy President today is going to confront the judiciary, how are they expected even to have ever a dialogue with them or even have to have uh, respect, mutual respect? I think the deputy president must respect the courts. If you lose a court case, you lose the appeal, you lose a Supreme Court, accept that you are wrong and allow the country to move on. So it cannot be this sort of business that uh, the executive yeah. confronts the judiciary in that matter. The judiciary needs to be clothed with the power it needs. It needs to, to arbitrate all matters. And if one person disrespects the judiciary, then we are all going to disrespect the, ju the, the judiciary and we are not going to have a country. There are very many court cases criminal, civil in nature pending in those courts, yeah. and everybody deserves their right to be heard in court. Yeah. In fact, each party has advocates, mm -hmm. thorough advocates. I believe uh, Gashagwa never took himself to court. He had thorough advocates who make their case, the other side make their case. Yeah. The judge determines using the law and the constitution. If you are not happy, proceed to the higher court. If you did not appeal in time, you cannot now come appeal, to appeal as a complaint against a judge, the Judicial Service Commission. It will still fail. Yeah. And even when Judicial Service Commission uh, judges uh, uh, makes a case against a judge, mm -hmm. if the judge is not satisfied, they still approach the High Court okay. or, or the Court of Appeal uh, in that order for, for justice. Okay. So justice can never be through confrontation. Yeah, uh, Senator Tavita, you know, that is actually happening today. I mean, uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa said he's going to state his case against Justice Esther Maina today and also yeah. called on Kenyans who have cases against the judiciary to join him. Does the executive have valid concerns against the judiciary and should there be dialogue? Uh, 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 Trevor, let me uh, start by saying that uh, the, the, nobody's above the law and uh, uh, the indication by the deputy president is that uh, he's following the law. He's uh, taking this uh, matter uh, to the Judicial Service uh, Commission. It is, that is a normal, that is a correct procedure. And during his uh, uh, case, he, he adhered. He did not resist. You know, so he's, uh, he's uh, a leader who's, uh, you know, following the law. On the, on the other issue of uh, uh, dialogue, 
you know, uh, you realize and you note correctly that uh, previously, when the judiciary uh, wanted to have a conversation with the executive, as far as the, their budgets are concerned, they, they had an opportunity, they discussed. Why is it that when they are discussing their issues of the budget, it is not being raised uh, as a concern? And, and, and when the uh, agenda of a dialogue is uh, brought, then it wants to be turned negatively uh, uh, politically by the political class. But the question is, what you know, is this dialogue about? Good. This dialogue, people need to understand, and Kenyans need to understand, that it is about the critique that the president has broadly come out and critiqued the judicial. <coughs> and, and you see, why is he doing that? Because you remember the promises that he made to Kenyans who voted uh, for us uh, were, were based on uh, one uh, agenda that is the housing project. And he needs to talk to Kenyans. He needs to tell Kenyans as a leader, this is where the problem is. And what is there is he's not fighting the judiciary. He has just critiqued the judiciary and is entitled to do that as a leader. But the beauty is that uh, with the leadership of Dr. William, it's a leadership of dialogue. We saw that we had uh, previously two uh, national dialogues uh, on the uh, issues that had been raised uh, by the opposition. And we had uh, uh, two which we concluded uh, uh, last year. And they went well because it's a leadership of sitting down with leaders, getting to understand where is the problem. It's not a leadership of going to the streets and continue to throw stones. People do not have time uh, for that. The best leadership is for people to sit down and analyze. And that is why I also want to appreciate uh, uh, CJ Kome, who has welcomed. Let us sit down. We are, this is our country at the end. She's the CJ of, of Kenya, yeah. of the Republic of Kenya. But what There's are they nothing wrong. About? They are dialing on the concerns that have been raised, and that is the corruption concern. And there's a what, structure to do that. No, no, there's yes, no problem. There is a structure but, to do that. So, and they've already stated it out there. Yes, that yes. we have a problem with your judgment. Yes. So what is this that? It is about? not the problem with just the It is the problem with a few judges. Not all judges <coughs> are corrupt. So and remember our, 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 our first like manifesto. Our judges. first, let me finish on this. Our first uh, goal is to ensure we cut on corruption. And the president has bro bro broadly <laughs> come out. Remember, in our first 100 days, he appointed these six judges. Okay? Why? Because we needed to capacitate the judicial system have uh, uh, lead times within uh, the, the service delivery for judicial uh, processes and he did that uh, for us to have it flowing and there was nothing wrong with that he also gave them uh, a budget and all that so when there is a problem when there is a, a challenge and he has raised it what is wrong with a dialogue. Why do people want not, to, want not to look at the corruption that is being raised and just look at it from a political process? Because then there's the question. If the, if the conversation, the dialogue is going to be about the corruption yes, issues, yes. then it's like it's going to be swept under the carpet. Why not take it through the processes that are there in law? Correct. What, what are you talking about there is no, one, one on one within the judiciary and the executive? If there's a problem, state that this is a problem with this judge, let's go through the system, which is a JAC. Correct. Then why there is no there? problem with also sitting with the, with, the, with the leadership of judiciary and getting to be able to analyze and point out so that they can go back and be able to look at those issues. Because as a leader, you cannot keep on, uh, as I said earlier with the, with the ministers, with the executive, keep on waking up and firing. And firing. Sometimes you need dialogue. And there's, what, what is irritating the opposition is because the president is a president of, of the people. He believes in that. When he had a dialogue with Raila Amolo, uh, but there was no problem. He, there, there was room for that and there was no why is it there's a problem when he wants to dial tomorrow when he's going to dialogue with the different institutions why is it that, that there's a problem why do people want to entertain that we keep on having a push and back of, of the war and number two the housing project which was part of our manifesto remember I've had uh, 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 council Manzo talk about uh, this these houses are not for uh, the needy but we have three stages. We have the affordable housing, we have the social housing, we have also, uh, depending on the market, uh, share housing. And, and the, 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 the price or the cost will be as little as even 3,000 as per what Kenyans are uh, right now paying as some of their rental uh, cost in the uh, houses <coughs> that they are living in. But it will be, you know, uh, it's called rent to own, mm -hmm. but as little as that amount so that this issue of the housing can be solved. And remember, yeah. let me give you even an example with a place like Kibra, uh, whereby uh, you know how the area uh, is, uh, quite a number of uh, slum uh, area. So you find that leaders do not want that 
Kenyans to be removed away from the slums so that you can always go back to them, uh, giving them the same, same promises year in, year out, because you don't want to uplift their living standards. You don't want to give them uh, uh, an environment that is conducive for their children to play, uh, uh, for it to have uh, other social amenities, the health facilities, good toilets, uh, electricity, and all that. You still want them to be in that status so that when you come again for the election, you can be still be able to convince those people who are in that status. Why not be the champion of changing uh, their lives? Okay. Lastly, on the same, yeah. of course, uh, jobs that have been created through this housing. Our young people are now, as we speak, working. Jobs have been opened. Uh, uh, other opportunities in terms of the local, the Juakali yeah. people have been given opportunities. Yeah. We are not but seeing that. Fine, we are not seeing that. We are just seeing... Been done against the law. There's a court Nothing process. has been done against yeah, the law. The, the, even right now. Is dialogue the against the law? The that is happening right now. Correct. The, the public says, part participation on the conservatory orders was the issue on the on the memo, the, on the memo, the, the the process of the physical uh, uh, participation. There is no problem <laughs> with it, and that it. is what is happening. <laughs> so let me hear what Joe has to say. Joe, what, what, do you believe there is a need for dialogue between the executive and the judiciary? Thank you, Trevor. And before I, I come to that, just uh, kindly allow me a second to tell uh, Senator Tabida that I did not mean uh, that. Uh, uh, nominated senators are, are, uh, are lesser in any way. What I meant is uh, when the people maybe, if, for example, she's elected, uh, nominated in Nairobi, but the people of Nairobi, when they encounter a problem, the first senator they think about is Senator Sifuna. He's because, wrong. Uh, no, I give you uh, your time. No, 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 no. The first person they will go take their view. They'll go to any mostly, senator in Nairobi. Uh, it, it's my view. Please give me my Just time. Just elected in Nairobi. Yeah, they will feel like this is the senator that we gave a job. Okay. That's what I meant. Yeah. I do not in any way, and I would not want to be misquoted, as having meant that uh, a nominated senator is uh, lesser than an elected senator. All I meant is the people feel that the person that uh, should be indebted to us is that which was nominated. Really now, um, having said that, let me, let me, let me, let me say, uh, relating to this uh, um, uh, dialogue and about the teeth between the judiciary and the executive, um, I think what uh, the president and us are saying is that, well, we understand there are so many technicalities in law, uh, like those that uh, our brother Will has, uh, you know, has uh, well enumerated here. But what I think in simple language we are saying is these judges are Kenyans. As they pass judgment, as they make orders, let them consider the impact of these orders. Let them ask themselves what the motives of the litigants are. Let them serve justice for, the benefit, for what we call greater good. Let them deliver social justice. Let, not, let's, let them not just look at the technicalities and completely turn a blind eye to the many people that would have been benefited, for example, from this housing um, uh, project or program had it continued. I think that is what the president and we in Kenya Kwanza are saying. Let, let them put a human touch in their orders, in their judgments. And in the same light, allow me to say, I have not seen and I have not heard the opposition mention one particular court order that the president or anybody in the executive, uh, I mean, defied. Not even one. It's just about the political pronouncements that we have been making. The public participations are ongoing right now. The court said, don't do public. Um, as is written. Well, 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 let me not delve into that. Very uh, because court order that has been ignored. Um, well, um, uh, let, let me not deal with that because I may not get time to. Very to, 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 okay. to, okay. to, to, to talk about the other things that we wanted to talk about. Uh, Willis has also talked about, uh, you know, uh, we should have given, uh, you know, statistics on the revenue that would be generated from this uh, housing program. Uh, uh, even before we came to the finance bill, the then was going to, you know, uh, uh, a guide on how to collect the money meant for the planned. 
project completely with uh, the revenues it was supposed to raise, uh, what uh, benefits were going to come. But, but, but sometimes, to be fair to everyone, uh, the kind of jobs, the kind of revenue that may be generated from these projects may not be enumerated, may not be, you know, may not be captured at this early moment. Because uh, remember we are saying, if you come to Moranga, for example, uh, we have a program, uh, a project that I started at a place called Mackenzie, somehow rural, near a place called Kabati. Uh, when these, they are putting up 220 units there. When 220 uh, people come to that small town, uh, for example, of course, we have what we call the multiplier effect. Yeah. These are people who will be shopping there. These are people who will be taking matatus from there. Yeah. And if they are driving, they'll be fueling their vehicles. There are mamambogas, there are, are people who will sell uji. And it is happening already. Yeah. Some mamas who will sell uji there. There are some people who will sell mitura in that particular now. So there are, there are many things, there are many, many areas where, where, where the, 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 the people will earn from this particular. But coming to the dialogue, and that's why I wanted to, I didn't want to finish before this. And I thank my colleague, Tabitha, because she has said that people should not complain about this dialogue, upcoming dialogue between the executive and the judiciary because Nobody complained when we had NADCO. Mm. Why would we complain? Why do, do we not want the president or his representatives for that matter to get into dialogue with the judiciary? There's no separation of powers between the government and the, ex and the opposition. There is separation of powers between the executive and the judiciary. But they're all arms of government and there's no problem with them coming together. And then the other thing uh, that I wanted to say is it is a chief justice actually if I'm right, if I'm not wrong, that has called for this dialogue. I don't think it is the president or the executive that has called for this dialogue. So I think what I would advise maybe the opposition to then do, maybe they can uh, apply or talk to the chief justice and express their desire mm -hmm. to be included yeah. in that particular, uh, in those particular talks. Azamika. But you cannot start blaming the executive for accepting to dialogue, led by the, His Excellency the President, for accepting to di a dialogue to which he has been in, we have been invited by the judiciary. So, uh, I mean, um, we have talked, uh, Willis again talked about uh, blanket statements, you know? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, blanket statements because of the first point that I had there, that we want people, don't be too technical, don't be too mechanical, be Kenyans. Look at Kenya as your country. Look at what would benefit Kenyans. And finally, yeah. uh, 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 Trevor, about uh, the deputy president uh, taking his uh, um, uh, his uh, uh, what do you call it? Is appeal an appeal or whatever he's taking to about justice, Esther Maina. Yeah. That is his democratic right, uh, and I think it was uh, uh, his decision yeah. that he does that personally. And not, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I know you can also choose. You have the option of representing yourself in a court of law or being represented by a lawyer. In this case, the deputy president thought and decided that he wants to present, the word has come, he wants to present his petition at, as a person. Okay. And surely, it is democratic right. right. Let's we cannot fault him now, for that. Feedback. Let's read that quickly and then I'll give each and every one of you 30 seconds for closing remarks. Well, it's just 30 seconds for closing remarks. Let's bring up the feedback and see what you're saying. And Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Daybreak. There's a lot coming through. I don't know whether we'll go through all of them, but let's try and see. Okango says Kenya Kwanzaa and UDA have realized they put into office unsuitable and incompetent individuals. No amount of retreat, reshuffles, or replacements of their ticket will cure the mess. They should now exit office in a bottom-up manner as they came. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Frank Orinde says, I doubt the president is ready to drop any of his cabinet secretaries. He's comfortable with them as they are. And again, the strategy is clearly geared to the next election. The president doesn't want to rub the shoulders the wrong way. Injina Nazaro says, cabinet retreat really needed even tomorrow. President needs to reconstitute his cabinet with the competent people. He should address Kenya winning foreign relations, warning foreign relations, and government popularity rate amongst Kenyans. 
Samuel Wood says, hopefully the retreat will be a productive opportunity to identify areas for improvement and develop a, con and a, a concrete plan for better performance. Sir Nixon says, reshuffling underperformers is like transferring a problem from one section to another. The best option is to replace them with qualified or competent performers. Samuel again says, Kenya needs a cabinet reshuffle. Underperforming cabinet secretaries should be sacked and replaced by competent individuals who are experts in the relevant fields. Godi says there should be regular appraisals and cabinet reshuffles in the Kenya Kwan's administration for the purposes of optimal performance and efficiency in government. This move will discourage laxity and cluelessness. <laughs> Okelo Molimu says even if the retreat were to result into a reshuffle, I don't see any significant benefit it would lead to. It would be like replacing an injured player with another injured one. <laughs> what is needed in Kenya Kwanza retreat with is an aim of redefining their anti-poor policies. Okay, Willis, closing remarks, one minute. Very briefly, I mean, Kenyans should bless themselves for a very tough time with a failing regime. Kenya Kwanza is not able to respond to our economic problems, and they'll keep blaming everybody. Today is the judiciary, tomorrow it will be poor Kenyans for not paying taxes, the next will be children of poor Kenyans for trying to pursue soft life. So these are regimes that, I mean, the jury is out there, and we've all formed an opinion. So probably the conversation about this country should be how to get Kenya Kwanza out of office. I don't think we expect anything good that will come out of them. They've shown us what they are capable of, and we've seen their best. And their best has led to the failures that we're facing today. Okay, Manzo, one minute. Uh, yeah, the, you, you see, we all want the best for Kenya, and I believe uh, that's what the current government should do. But unfortunately, with the level of incompetence in uh, cabinet, uh, I think the president has no choice. If he really wants to make a little difference, uh, now that his regime has completely failed Kenyans, he has to remove these ministers and most of them and substitute them with uh, uh, competent people who can serve this nation better. Okay, Tabitha. Uh, I want to say that uh, this is our country, this is our, our, our Kenya, and uh, the focus that uh, the president uh, has is to ensure that he delivers and to the manifesto that uh, we promise the same, same Kenyans that uh, put us in office and uh, without too much uh, ranting here and there and all that, this is the year 2024 uh, to be able to be more actionable with, uh, with less words and I believe with these dialogues then it will give room for more results. I like it when uh, senior council uh, talked about bringing in LSK churches, political leaders, that's an indication that the dialogue has not been open. It is okay, it is welcome. Let them seek also uh, room to be able to be able to put their opinion because they're entitled and there's no problem with that. Okay, Joe. Uh, thank you, Willis, and uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. I think I want to ask all Kenyans uh, to be patient with this government. Uh, we have been in office for um, uh, slightly over an year. I mean, uh, government programs take time uh, for them to bear fruit, and so I think uh, the prophets of uh, the prophets of doom should not uh, make Kenyans only see gloom. Mm. Uh, there is a lot of light, uh, not just some light at the end of the tunnel. I'll let Kenyans give this uh, uh, regime some more time, and I know that we are going to deliver finally to the people of Moranga. Yeah. I want to tell them that uh, even as we do politics, we are still serving them. Uh, I'm still uh, uh, fighting for more resources for our county, and that is why many things are happening in the county that were not happening uh, before a junior to became senator, because now I'm able to source for more funds than before there. When they are here as doing politics, we do politics and then go back home and work. Mm -hmm. Just like that preacher who preaches on Sunday in the church, but still goes home to serve his family as a father. Mm -hmm. And so let people not be misguided that Junior Toho is now only doing politics. I am working, but we are in politics. Mm -hmm. We have to make comments and we have to, of course, also fight for Moranga, yeah. which uh, uh, elected me. Otherwise, there is no fight between me and anybody. There is no fight between Moranga and other counties. Mm -hmm. Junior Toho and others are only giving their honest opinions and uh, we have no problem with okay. anybody. And we want Kenya Kwanza to succeed. Yeah. We want William Ruto to be president in okay. 2027. All right. Thank you very much for making time this morning. Honorable Dan Manzo, Senator McQueenie, Honorable Joe Newton, Senator Muranga, Honorable Tabitha Mutinda, nominated Senator and Willis Odino, advocate of the High Court. Thank you very much for making time this morning. That has been State of the Nation. And thank you all for all the feedback that you've sent through. Coming up next is Cooking Tips. Bye for now.